Hi, in this tip of the day, I want to talk about the feedback effect. And I have to say, this is not the first attempt to make this video. Uh, I try to keep it short, but it just doesn't work. So it's a super complicated effect and it's not a short tip. So, well, but maybe it might be worth it because if you look at the feedback effect and what it does, so if I enabled it here with like an uh, idle animation, and then holding Alt to blend over these presets here, you can already see how versatile this thing is. So it can do anything from like reaction diffusion like effects to uh, water like, to abstract lines, to points, to uh, maybe like colors and like, uh, like, you know, like oily colors, twirls and things like that. And this only comes right now from like the text input. So, you know, if you drive it by video or like another more complex scene setup, of course you can do um, much more. And um, so, yeah, as I said, it is powerful. And um, so let's quickly go through how this is being made and how you can drive it and use it. So um, if we double click this operator here to jump into that, we see that it's actually not very complicated. So we uh, have like this node here, use render target that uses the final output to do the feedback loop. And if we use the last frame, it will adjust the color. So it will keep the color within like valid ranges like uh, not black or not pure white because otherwise the simulation quickly explodes into not a number and then uh, you would have to set it and this would be bad for like a video set so we will keep the the simulation scope within like bounds we will do a little bit of edge detection we will also use this image we will blur it and then we use the blurred version of it to displace the thing on top of itself and then we will render this into the layer 2D. The layer 2D, we see uh, we can offset this layer, so we can uh, turn it to smoke going up or like maybe water going down, or rotate and zoom it like the classical like video uh, effects. And then we have a bunch of setups here, so if we pause this, it will stay, so like we will uh, do no uh, offset whatsoever. And if we rewind the time, we will reset the buffer, so, um, Sometimes this is useful. So actually this is all there is. And let's quickly go through how this works. So to visualize a little bit what's going on here, let's pause this for a second so we can play with that and look at this image. And then if we add uh, in Heather uh, ob object called image levels, we can see the height, uh, the brightest distribution along this line. So we could actually move this a little bit to uh, maybe have like a, like, a, like a more smooth thing here. So let's move this there. So we will we cut through the image at this line. We see most of the thing is bright, so it's brighter than like average. Uh, it is uh, being clamped at right here. So this is the letters. We went with full opacity on top of that. So if we would actually change this, let's pin this there. So I think if we would change this and uh, drive this, we can actually see how, uh, you know, these are the letters there uh, forming. And they are forming some kind of landscape. You can see this. Um, so it's uh, through the feedback already, we can see like this decay here, and this is, you can imagine it's a slope and the displays offsets the image towards the slope, you know, like a water flowing down the hill. And this is the, uh, this is the pure, this is the essence of this. So we have a direction going down the slope and this direction we use to displace the image. And this is where all the magic comes from. So if you understand this, you, understand how to adjust the parameters, not to just play around, but actually form and craft this uh, feedback effect. So let's go back to the feedback here and see what all these parameters do. So let's enable uh, idle motion again. And then let's first go through like this parameter here, which is called twist. 
So right now, twist is zero, which means we displace down the slope, meaning uh, away from the bright uh, thing here. If we start to twist this, this is in, in degrees, we can see how um, this would now, with 90 degrees, it would go around the slope. You know, it's like, uh, you know, like maybe almost like height lines on a map or something. And then if we uh, increase this even further, we uh, see how this now goes inward. Um, and you already see like some crazy non-predictable stuff going on here because uh, like these now will try to go towards the bright areas, you know, or like uh, this will always flow toward the bright areas and eventually like the bright areas will like eat itself and then you already have like some weird animation going on there. Um, then of course we have the displacement. This is actually the speed of the displacement. If we slow this down to zero, the image should actually stay stable. So like if we, yeah, no, it, we see the transformation is slower and slower. Um, we also have like this displace offset. So this means that we uh, independent on how st steep the slope is, we will always displace into the direction. This is kind of um, unintuitive, but if we add this, you will quickly see that it adds like some kind of very organic movement. And for a lot of feedback, it will be like very powerful to have like this kind of like uh, oily, like smoke, like feedback effects that are uh, quite interesting. So um, I think like a lot of like the powerful effects of this feedback comes from these two fighting against each other. So like the default displacement going into one direction and then the displacement from the slope pushing it back into another direction. And you already see like these super interesting uh, reaction diffusion like patterns. Then uh, we, we have like sample distance. This always means like how uh, to compute the slope or the edge. Um, how uh, far in pixels these are, like what's the difference. So if we increase this quite a lot, uh, the effects got, got bigger because uh, the slope is bigger, but it also gets uh, less, uh, less precise. Sometimes this is, might be what you want. Sometimes this will add like a lot of noise and artifacts and stuff, which is also maybe what you want. So let's reset this here. And maybe also reset this. Uh, displacement offset here. Then we have a shade, which uh, can be useful to add a little bit of um, uh, of the D effect that will basically increase depending on the gradient, the, uh, like the brightness. So if we crank this up, we will see how like the image turns more like 3D-ish and we have like this weird bevel effect. Sometimes this is interesting. And of course, like this bevel effect will it's have like drive again, like the simulation. If we drive this to the other direction, it will um, make things darker. At a certain point, uh, the reaction will uh, explode and it will turn into pure, uh, yeah, you see like it's already fighting there and then you have like something like pure whiteness and then you can reset this and it will go back to normal. We have the blur radius. We talked about like how uh, we use the slope and then we like we use the image, we blur it, and then we use the blurred image as a slope for the displacement. So if we increase the blur radius, uh, sometimes this gives like very pleasing effects. So maybe we add, uh, uh, maybe we add like a little bit of shade here to see more. Um, and then if the blur radius is like too big, we already see like these artifacts which is like the blur resolution. So I think the, let's quickly look how many blur samples we use, maybe like 30 or so 40. So it's, a, it's, it's an expensive effect with 40 samples, but it should be good enough for, let's see if it's working with 4K. Uh, yeah, it's uh, working with 4K, uh, doing, working now differently. So like, this is always the thing with, uh, if it's depending on pixel resolution, uh, but yeah. Um, so maybe let's go to, uh, to 1080p here. 
So let's uh, return this back. Um, then we have the twist. We talked about this, so we can really see how like we uh, twist the displacement along the the gradient. Of course, then we have like these classical things. You know, you can zoom in or you can zoom out. Um, and I think if you if you do this too much, it looks cheesy. You know, if you add like rotate, it's like okay, like. Okay. Every, everybody can do this but if you do this like just a little bit um, then suddenly you have like these growing things which can be quite intriguing I think um, so yes, you have like these weird uh, things growing out there um, we talked about like the offset a little bit so we can offset the image horizontally or vertically so maybe if you want to have like some weird smoke rising up. So right now it's going towards the white because the, uh, the, the twist is pointing inwards. But if we uh, twist this toward the odd right here, and maybe we reduce the displacement here, and maybe we uh, a little bit of less shade, then, uh, it might almost look like a little bit of smoke going on there, which might be interesting. Um, then we have um, the shift U, shift situation and shift brightness. So this will be applied to the whole, uh, to the complete image. So right now we shift the U, which is like, why would you ever do this? But um, if you go back to the text here, and uh, change it from pure white to let's say a color you see how like these colors are slowly shifting towards the green here and this can add some very subtle and nice effects and uh, these different u values also have like a subtle effect on the displacement which might uh, introduce like, very interesting things and um, of course, if you increase the U-shift, you can go into like pure rainbow land. Um, and then if you then have like the shift situation and you say like uh, it should go yeah, it's straight to 70s, which uh, might sometimes be interesting. Of course, you can also like uh, desaturate it uh, all the way down. Um, then... Um, Go back here. Uh, we also have like the thing called amplified edges. There's always a little bit of amplified edges on and the default, and this basically means that we will add edge detection toward the fringes here. And if you increase this a lot, the image becomes like super crazy and unstable. So uh, you should be aware that this might not be what you want. And if you increase this too much, um, the simulation will explode. Um, of course, we can counter this by shifting the brightness and making the brightness always like a little bit darker. And suddenly you have like these, uh, this fight, you know, you have like these edges that stay there and because they're edges, they are detected and they add brightness, but you also have like these, uh, the shift brightness, the whole image is being pushed down towards the darkness. And suddenly also, again, you have like these crazy simulation like pumping effects that seem to be coming from nothing and a uh, yeah i just love playing with that and of course if you add like a little bit of zoom you suddenly have like these uh, uh yeah these uh interesting uh interesting shades and of course um sometimes if you want to add like these things you can always do things like uh and uh, this, uh, maybe not with image levels, but let's take this away and then execute. And then you can always like render the original thing on top. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry, this was bad. Um, so we add this here. So we can, uh, you know, have the original image there and uh, so uh, have something readable. So you can always use post-processing magic to use the, the advanced feedback to do some kind of additional uh, effect. So um, um, 
So, back to, to feedback. Uh, we are, uh, it's already long enough. So we should stay focused. Uh, and we are almost through. So we have like the, we have the shift brightness and the amplifier edges. Let's return this to the default. We have the limit sprites. So you can basically say like if it's zero, then we are, don't do any limiting whatsoever. This means that um, if you add uh, now, um, let's say if you increase the brightness, it will go to crazy. Um, you, you should see like how oh, this is it's super bright. Um, and within a simulation, eventually this might get so bright that it's no longer usable. And then uh, you see like if we limit the brights, then we see how these uh, uh, will be kept within like an like a valid range. And then we have like the sample radius for the blur, which is um, has sometimes an effect. So you can play with that as well. So um, yeah, there you have it. This is all you need to know to build like super uh, crazy feedback effects. And uh, believe me, if you if you map these some of these character uh, these parameters to MIDI controllers or to audio reaction stuff, um, I can attest that I uh, played hours with that just with this one single effect without doing anything else, but just like getting lost in there, lost in the simulation. So um, yeah, I hope this wasn't too long and too boring. Uh, if it was. You can scream in the comments um, or on Discord. Um, if you want to see more like this, then you can also let me know. Uh, yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye.